It takes years to plan for the future. The Transportation Expo is a chance for the public to see how Washington County and its cities are looking to accommodate the growth it's experienced over the last several years and into the future. It gives not only an opportunity for uh, officials to show their plans, things that, are, that they might do in the future. It also gives the citizens an opportunity to weigh in. Several booths were set up at the Dixie Center showcasing those projects. We've got over on the other side uh, a, a booth talking about the Southern Parkway uh, to be built between Sand Hollow Reservoir and State Route 9. Uh, there's another booth over here on the I-15 corridor from uh, milepost 0 to 11. They're looking at you know what needs to be done in that corridor in the future. Um, we, we, we may be looking at something in the Bloomington intersection in the near future. Uh, Washington City's here to talk about exit 11 that would potentially go on uh, on I-15 at Main Street. It's taxpayers' money that funds most of these transportation systems. While developers help to carry a fair amount of those costs, the citizens still pay the lion's share. That's why it's so important that long-range plans prioritize the most important needs first. And our project list has to be fiscally constrained. Um, and it's difficult. It's difficult to fit everything in that we need and, and maintain the level of services that we have. The projects for St. George City this year are numerous, especially in heavily congested areas like River Road. That's from uh, Riverside Drive to 1450 South. It will widen the bridge at, at the Virgin River Bridge and it's to provide uh, dual left turning lanes uh, from River Road northbound onto Riverside Drive and then also southbound River Road onto 1450 South. Um, that project is to, uh, supposed to commence, uh, begin uh, early fall, um, and then it could, be a, it could be anywhere from a nine month to a 12 month project. Another area that is outgrowing its roads is Little Valley near 3000 East, where two new schools were just built. With the coming um, of Crimson Cliffs High School, in the Washington Fields area. The middle school is already open. The high school is supposed to start this fall. Um, we've got some roadways out there that we need to complete. Um, one of them is 1450 South to extend 1450 South beyond. Um, it's already a little bit past beyond uh, uh, 3000 East uh, next to Bridal Gate, a subdivision, but it needs to go further to the east uh, to the south side of the high school area. Um, and so we are, we will be constructing that in 2019. In conjunction with that, there's a couple other roadways that will be improved along there and repaved 3430 East and 2000 South. The plan is to be done before school begins. There will also be three new stoplights going into the Little Valley area. Um, there's, there's one at 2450 South and 3000 East that will be constructed and that will be within the next few months. Um, there's one at 2000 South and 3000 East and then one at 1450 South and 3000 East. At least one area resident has watched her neighborhood grow from farmland into residential. And we live in uh, between Washington Fields and Little Valley on 3000 and we moved there seven and a half years ago and the pavement ended on 3000 at that point and there were no homes on past there and now there is like three churches and uh, probably, I'm guessing, two to 3,000 new homes. Two more stoplights will control traffic in popular commercial zones. Mall Drive and Dinosaur Crossings up by Smith's uh, Food King, and then one at uh, Medical Center Drive and Foremaster there by the, the hospital. Washington Parkway is another passageway that may give some relief to Green Springs Road in Washington City. Another big project is the runway reconstruction at the St. George Regional Airport, which will cost around $23.5 million. The airport will be shut down for four months while contractors dig down 17 feet to replace the current runway. You, what happens when you go to book that flight, if it's between those, the 29th of May and the 26th of September, it says no flights available at that time. And, uh, and so that's how it's happening. We put it on our website that the closure dates, all of that, so it's on there. Um, but it's a big impact for us. We'll lose four months of income. The airlines will obviously lose four months of income, but then they won't have any expenses either for the most part. They're not buying fuel. They're not. They're not. They're still pay their people, but their people, I think, will be 
far as I understand, I think they'll go out to different stations. In order to try and keep ridership up, Suntran will change the timing of its bus services at the end of April. The buses will leave and arrive every half hour after each hour of operation. Ridership has been pretty stable at about 450,000, but we're losing about 4% a year, and that's the reason for this change, is to make it easier to remember and to keep um, the riders that are there more capable of remembering and, and taking the bus. And a bus shuttle service from St. George to Springdale has also been funded. But perhaps the most exciting new addition to St. George's mode of transportation are these new scooters, which can be rented by using an app. SPIN is bringing these electric scooters sometime this month, we're hoping, uh, and there's going to be about 250 initially. Real easy, it's all done by app, and it's really inexpensive to ride. It's a buck for the first 30 minutes, a great way to get around town, and it's you know, if you ask me, it's, it's kind of addicting once you get to ride one and, and take it for a spin. So I think people are really going to like it. A lot easier than I thought. A lot of fun. <laughs> you think yeah. you'd rent one? I could, yeah. Easily. <laughs> How about you? I I would, oh, definitely. I would definitely rent one. It's yeah. efficient. It's fun. UDOT and road construction crews remind drivers to slow down in all construction sites and be prepared to take a different route. In Washington County, Melissa Anderson, Community Education News.